Let's have a look at the uh, two teams and we'll start off with Featherston Rovers and the big news is no Riley Jackson could be out for quite a while as well. Morgan Smith then is partnered by Jonathan Ford who makes just his second start for Rovers. Moores, Jones and Springer is a strong looking uh, front three with Helliwell, Hardcastle and Wildey making up the pack. What about on the other side of the coin where well, we know all about Lachlan Lamb, he starts on the bench. That means Mellor and Reynolds continue at half-back. But look at that back line. Aikins, Ferguson, Chamberlain, McDonald and Charnley all star-studded and plenty of experience on the bench. And Kev's favourite player, Edwin Mbappe, sure to come on and make a big impact. Lee on the try line. Their fans looking on as they move it to Sidlow. Short pass opened up and there's John Asiata. He enjoys that, the big fella. Six of the season for him, celebrates in front of the Lee fans. It was too simple, clinical, but effective from the Centurions in Lee by four points to nil. It's a fantastic play, the service from Gummy Arms, unbelievable. Right on the money from Aaron Smith. The ball then from Sidlaw, I think, is the turn up. If you watch here, it's Smith who's looking left, looks right, scanning around. The service is unbelievable, right on the money. Sidlaw catches, what a pass to Asiata, and that's what you get. High-level skill from Sidlow, who has got great percent of hands, good vision, Asiata supporting, forward to forward, unbelievable try, Kev. Still a couple of tackles left, they're going right, they fizz the pass to Smith, he goes to Leilua, Leilua going for the line! Big Joey Leilua powers his way in, and look at the reaction! 13th of the season, he looks pumped for this one, and Featherston hits straight back. It's Rovers 4, Centurion 6. Well, we mentioned earlier, when you see Joey Leilua chasing kicks and being aggressive, it's always a good sign for your team. He took the ball from a scrum and he looked a real ample, and then he gets up against his opposite number, Nene McDonald, possibly the best centre in the league today in this year's uh, championship, and he just fends him off, gets rid of Josh Charnley, but still has a lot to do. We see he skips out, fends Josh Charlie off as well and gets the ball down. That's a great contribution from Joey Lalo. Ball now with Smith, gets it away to Mella. Mella to Ferguson. Ferguson's gone straight through! A shake of the hips! And Ferguson celebrates the new contract with another try. It's 12th of the season in just 10 games for the Centurions. That was too easy. Featherston punished for errors in their own half. And it's Leo lead by 10 points to four. And we talk about players that we come to pay to watch. Blake Ferguson's one of those. X Factor, state of origin, Australia, international. NRL legend comes over and it's the play, it's the corners play. Dummy drop off, Mello goes across the line, but the right foot steps straight through the gap. He's still got the speed, the awareness. He's been played at a high level for so long. Dummy drop off, corners around the back. He's still got a lot of work to do. Goes through the gap. Fantastic striker. Smith. Gets it away to Mella, he's going to run it here, the shorter room, and again, the ball away. Ferguson again, ball back on the inside. Back-to-back -back Centurions tries. Caleb Aikens over for his 15th of the season. Featherston switch off, the Centurions make the play. 16-4, the Centurions lead. Yeah, and it was a short side play. Joe Mella summed it up great. He found the ball to Sam Stone, who just, you know, he was just too physical, he gets his hands free. Ball comes to the man that we're speaking about, Blake Ferguson. And he didn't panic, he just summed it up beautifully. We see it again now, Sam Stone just too strong, carries the tackle. Ferguson just waits for his friend, teammate Caleb Aikins, who scores the try. But that's great vision by Joe Meller, just spotting they've only got two down the short side. And that's why they are such a good side. And they are going to be pretty hard to stop, it's as simple as that. John, John in the background, There's a bit Tyler of a, bit of Fisty cuffs over on the far side, and not for the first time today. Temperatures just boiling over. Ben Helliwell was involved momentarily there, and they're still having a push and a shove. And maybe there are a few markers that need putting down. Lay Lewis in there, looking and giving the eyes. They ain't backing off though, are they? Wardle's in there going down. nose to nose with him. They're Wardle saying, if you want to have a go, let's get it on. He's braver than me, Wardle. I'll be, I'll be out of the way of the big man, but yeah, it's all on, and this is what we like to see. Fire up, emotion, Lelua, he's in there. Happy, as we talked about, he's in there, as usual, he comes on to, to throw it about, get his boys fired up, let's see what happens here from the referee. Yeah. 
12 to go to the break. Three. Liam Moore just giving himself a bit of thinking time here. We saw some cards earlier on in the Bradford Halifax game. Well, there's, there could be cards coming here for sure. Wow. Punches thrown, red cards coming. Nene McDonald about to go. Tyler Hefe about to go. Here come the card. Not the yellow one, it's the red one. So Nene McDonald throwing punches is gone. They know the rules. You cannot raise your fists anymore in a rugby league field. And Nene McDonald's. It's a blot on his copybook, so he's gone. He looks round to see who's going, and Tyler Epi knows what's coming here. There's no second-class stamp on this one, Tyler, you're off, son. 12 against 12. Attack to the head. Let's see if we can see on this angle. Oh, McDonald, well, Leon, you cannot defend that, I'm afraid. He's got to go. Five away. They go short, Sidlow offloads it, Pape going for the line! Crash is over! Edwin and Pape is in! Much to the, the delight of the, of the faithful there from Lee. Look at them, they love it, they love Edwin and Pape. And it's a crucial try, 22 points to four. Is that the game-breaker? And it's the danger man, Sidlow near the line, just finds a pass again. Good. Joe Miller's got the open side and Sidlow just hits spins. And if Pape no, only knows one way and that's forward, gets the try. And, you know, that's so crucial at this stage of the game. Featherston were just feeling like they were getting back in the game. Eze carries it forward. Strong carry, good offload, bit of second phase play. And Jones now is through. Has he got the pace to get there? What a cut, what a score from Connor Jones. A burst of pace on the back of the Eze offload. And Featherston had to score next. They have scored next. Featherston 8, Lee 24. And we've got two of the quickest, most dynamic number nines on the field. Now Edwin, Edwin Ipape, whatever you can do, I can do better. Connor Jones. He just gets the ball, pins his ears back, goes straight through the gap and then goes round the fullback. It's a great offload from SA. And then from here, he just puts the ball in two hands and goes round Ipape, round Aikens. And that's exactly what they needed going into half time. It gives them that glimmer of hope, that little bit of confidence that they can come out and really go after this game in the second half. It totally changes Brian McDermott's half-time speech. I think you're going there with your heads held high, bouncing a little bit, believing that you can do this. Away, but more tackles to withstand here for Featherstone. Asiata fires the pass to Reynolds. Reynolds cuts off the left foot step, goes towards the post. He's tackled. Pape now fires it wide, they rush out, they miss the tackle, trouble here! <laughs> and Aikens nicks a try on Charlie! I think the pass was going for Charlie, Aikens says, hang on, I'm having some of that! And he's over again, and Lee score first in the second half, they lead by 28 points to 10. And that's Joey Mellor's just that, his, his vision, he's moved before he's caught the ball. He sees Joey Leilu in his eye line. It's the ball from dummy half, and he just lets that float across, across his chest, as we see here. Pape, he just whips it out, and he just moves away from Joey Leilua, and then fires the pass, and the cheeky monkey, he takes it off. Josh Charlie, his wing, who wants to score as many tries as he can. Jones to Eze, Eze offloads again, gets it away to Moores. Moores now going for the line. Oh, he wanted to flick it out, there was no one to pass it to. He did well to hang on in the end there. Plays it quickly, here goes Eze, he's over the line, he's scored! Sam Eze crashes his way over! What a run from the young fella, barges his way in, well his offloads have been good, and look at the reaction, he enjoyed that, Sam Eze, it was easy for Eze. Well that's how to do it, just run on 100 miles an hour. He created the damage initially with the offload to Junior Moores, he created the damage in the first half with the offload to Connor Jones for the try. And then he just does it himself, route one. Look at this, I'm going to run 100 mile an hour. He gets the ball off Connor Jones. I thought there was a fumble myself, but he gets it down, we can clearly see it's on the line. Great effort from Sam Esse. It's got, like you say, Kevin, it's caught with three massive plays. The impact has been huge, offloads that have led to tries, breaks. 
that time, head down, backside up, he just looked so strong, big, strong, powerful, intelligent. They're going to ground, can't get the pass away, 15 out. Going short side again here, Reynolds, oh, great pass! Wonderful pass! Featherson were going one way, Chamberlain was going the other, and Chamberlain scores, maybe, maybe this is a match-winning try. Chamberlain is in, Lee 32-16. I think it was Reynolds with a skill there. He takes the ball to the line. I think it was Craig Hall that came out for the gamble play, looking for the intercept. He's done it many a times in his career. Look there, Bafé looks right. Reynolds goes to the line. Yeah, Craig Hall going for the intercept, leaves the ball. It's Chamberlain that gets over. It's, it's, it's Hall that needs to come up with his play. He leaves his man. It's a nightmare for defenders. If Pape works it short side, they're looking to create numbers. Here's Ferguson, puts his boot on it. It's going to be another try. This time, it's Stone who touches it down. Ferguson again, the provider, this time with a little kick. And Stone is all smiles. It's his eighth of the season. And Lee Centurion's wrapping up home advantage in the playoffs. And there's so much to like about this try. I think that the, the initial run by Mella creates it, then he Pafé's vision, he sees the short sides open, but then the skill for him, Sam Stone, Chamberlain. And then it's that man again who we spoke about a lot tonight, Blake Ferguson. We see him when he gets hold of the ball. He gets hold of the ball, sums it up well, he can't pass the ball, so he puts it on his toe. But the execution is absolutely perfect for Sam Stone. And there's so many bodies in the frame, I think six or seven, and that just shows you why. They're winning so many games, so winning so many games by so much of a margin. With a papa, here's Meller again, gets it away to Asiata, finds Lamb, little chip kick through. Oh, that could be a try if they grounded it. They think it's... they've got this down, this is going to be a try. Well, it looked for all money that the ball was rolling dead. Well, it's Charlie who's in the middle of it. Who got the final touch? We'll confirm, Wardle is in there as well, but the kick was from Lachlan Lamb and it's Wardle's celebration, it's his try. Well, we mentioned his work rate, he never gave up on that ball, it looked to be rolling dead, and Wardle catches Featherston napping. Lamb, his first real input into this team, the kick, Wardle gets there. He had no right, he had no right to get there, they say the kick's only as good as the chase, and that kick was too heavy. But Joe Mott Wardle made sure it wasn't too heavy. There's, this fella will be one of them as well. Joe Meller. Here's Asiata. Gets it away to Aikens. Aikens breaks through. Now Aikens is quick. He's got support. He's inside. And it's going to be a debut try. Lachlan Lamb dives in. He looks up at the Featherston fans and says, See you later, guys. Lee getting home advantage in the playoffs. A new signing. And another star in the making, Lamb scores. Lee lead 44-16. I bet that's put the biggest smile on his dad's face, Adrian Lamb, the coach tonight. You know, I think he's been really impressive. He's been patient, he's not trying to do everything when he's come on the field. He set one try up, he set a break up, and then he scored the try. His dad doesn't look overly impressed. I think he's trying to sort of substitute, but he's been fantastic. And what a bit of firepower they've got off the bench. They brought Ipape on, they brought Kai O'Donnell on. Brought the man who scores the try, Lachlan Lamb on. Caleb Aikens featured really well tonight, Mark. Scored a few, created a few. Nice break. We disappoint with the defence, Featherston, but again, it looks simple, Leon, but you've still got to do it. Draw the defender and pass the ball. Lee Faithfuller in full voice away to our right hand side. A game that saw two red cards, was played ultimately in very good spirit. And those Lee fans celebrating, they'll be looking forward to what they hope will be a grand final at the Lee Sports Village at the end of the season.